In this example, we're going to be demonstrating how to link SDK into your MBSC process uh, using tools like Cameo to construct your SysML diagrams and then making use of Phoenix Integration's MBSC pack to link that SysML tool back to SDK to start driving the parameters involved in your simulation. So to remind you of the scenario that we're working with, here in SDK, I'm showing a constellation design problem where we're looking at the number of satellites in each plane, the number of planes that we have, and then the orbit characteristic of those planes, like the semi-major axis or orbit altitude and the inclination of those planes. So these are all different concepts that are defined within our SysML diagram. So let me go ahead and bring up uh, Cameo to show the SysML diagrams that I have describing this system. First and foremost, we've got the block definition diagram that simply shows each constellation has a variety of orbit planes. Uh, each one of those orbit planes is at a defined inclination and orbit altitude. Then within each of those planes is a series of satellites. And on each one of those satellites is a variety of different payloads whether that's imaging sensors or communications assets like transmitters and receivers. In addition to the construction of the constellation, what I also have available here in SysML are the requirements of the constellation. So in this example, what we're looking to design is a constellation that has persistent stereo coverage of the world and meets the requirements for uh, whatever cost is available to us. So when I go to my design requirement satisfaction diagram, what I'm looking at here are which uh, properties on the constellation are linked to the requirements that we've defined. So when I'm evaluating coverage for the constellation, I get metrics like the coverage gap, meaning how much time elapses between, a grid, between when a grid point is viewed and when it's viewed again. Uh, and in this case, for persistent coverage, I should have zero gap ever. Uh, the end asset metric uh, tells me how many different assets are viewing each individual grid point throughout the scenario. So to meet my stereo coverage requirement, I need the end asset value to be two or more. And then, of course, for the cost model, I need to make sure that I'm below whatever allocated cost I have available. So in the previous example, we used Model Center to link STK back to our costing spreadsheet. Uh, again, just an overly simplified cost model of what the entire constellation uh, will cost us. And from there, I was able to run a series of trade studies and eventually ran a design optimization. So when I look here at the results of that optimization, I have a variety of different values that tell me the optimal construction of that system. So let me go ahead and go back to my SysML diagram and talk a little bit about how I'm actually evaluating the results from STK and Excel and bringing those back to my SysML diagram. So here's the parametric diagram that describes what the inputs are going into that evaluation, what the outputs are coming out of it. So again, depending on the number of planes, the number of satellites per plane, the inclination and the semi-major axis, I'll have a cost, a revisit time, and an end asset value coming out of the calculation. So from here, I'm going to go up to my tools menu and launch the MBSE analyzer. Again, that's the Phoenix integration tool that allows me to connect my SysML tool to my STK and Excel workflow in Model Center. So right here, uh, the default values that I have in my diagram right now are five satellites per plane five planes at an orbit altitude of 1,400 kilometers and an inclination of 45 degrees. What I'm seeing over here in the margin column is that I'm not actually meeting my end asset uh, metrics and I'm not meeting my coverage gap metric. So I'm going to go ahead and use the values that were provided to me from my design optimization and plug those numbers in here. So in that case, I have, instead of five planes, I'm going to build a constellation with six planes. And then instead of an orbit altitude of 1,400 kilometers, I'm going to be using 1530. So now that I've entered new values, I'm going to go ahead and run that analysis where the MBSC pack will now connect through Model Center 
back to the other tools I'm using throughout the digital thread to evaluate the quality of the system in the mission environment here. Now that SDK has finished running uh, its analysis, we'll be seeing those values get ported back to SysML. And in this case, what we're looking at are more failed values. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the results that we got in our optimization study and reuse these values over here, the optimal design, uh, in my SysML tool. So in this case, let me go ahead and specify that we will instead use six satellites per plane, and we'll use an orbit altitude of 1530. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rerun that analysis to see if that satisfies the requirements uh, for the rest of the system. All right, now that STK has finished, finished its evaluation of the constellation and the uh, mission outcomes, so the, uh, the stereo coverage and the persistent coverage, we can see over here in the margin column that I'm now satisfying all the requirements of the system with this new geometry. So from there, now you can understand how we're able to take values from SysML tools and pass them through Model Center into STK to evaluate those parameters in the mission environment and then hand those results back to the SysML tool uh, where that can now be saved back to your authoritative source of truth for the rest of the organization.